Alright guys, today we are going to be learning how to define our own function. So, we're going to start out with, let's just write down what we're doing. We are defining our very own function. Alright, so first off we want to know what what is a function. So, a function is a set of instruction for the computer okay and let's get some examples of these instructions what are some examples of these instructions um, let's do well, the first one I can think of right off the bat is print here's how this one works you just do print and then you can type something in there hello world and then when you run this this function tells the program that we want to print the words hello world on the screen okay so there's print that works what about upper that's also a function we're going to put this next one inside of here so we can um, show how upper works so I'm gonna get um, let's do a name is equal to Bob and how does the upper function work well if we do name dot upper so we took this variable and we ran the function upper on it let's see what happens here takes the word the name Bob and puts it in uppercase all right, so there's another function. And then we have lower. Does the same thing. Just if this is all uppercase, it'll make it all lowercase. Upper, lower, we have uh, round, I believe. Seal, floor. Okay. All right, so we have several functions, and, and now we hopefully know what a function is. Uh, let's give an example for round. Let's say number is equal to 5.5, and if we want to round the number, let's see what happens here. We have 5.5. How does that round? If we run that, we get 6, and if the number was 5.4, it will be 5. Okay, so our functions are working. We know how to use them, but <clears throat> let's say we want to make our own function. What if we want to make a function that does something like, I don't know, um, y equals mx plus b? Well, there's no function for y equals mx plus b. We would have to make that ourselves because Python doesn't have one already built in. Not one that I know of anyway. So I'm going to teach you guys how to actually make your own function. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with DEF. And you can see that that turned blue. So the computer recognizes that. So what that's saying is I'm about to create a function. And we're going to call this function greet. This is the greet function. Now I, you can see I used the, basically the exact same naming scheme we have here. So instead of the word print, I'm using the word greet, and we're going to make ourselves a little greeting. You end this with a set of colons, just like this. Press enter, and you'll notice that it, it went ahead and spaced over for me here. It's got a space. And what do I want to put here? I want to put some type of greeting. So let's just do print. Hello. Class. All right. So we use this def, and we created a function called and called it greet. After the colon here, this is how the function operates. So this is what it does. If you call the function greet, it will say hello class. So if I hit run, let's see if it does anything. Nope. Did it do anything? Why didn't it do anything? It didn't do anything because we didn't call it. We created the function, but we never called it. In all the other instances, 
we wrote print and then it printed something. Well, we never actually called it. So let's go ahead and call this function one time. Greet. And we'll call it just like we do any other function. So I'm going to run this. And there it is. Hello, class. What if I do it again? What do you think is going to happen? I'm going to do it again. Greet, greet, greet. And run. Well, set it three times. Congratulations, you made your first function. Awesome. So let's put some comments in here. DEF creates the function. And this is our functions code. Let's leave it like that. That's fine. Okay, so making a function that just says hello is not super uh, helpful. However, it is um, a good stepping stone to getting to the next point. Let's do something that has some use for it. So let's make another function. We're just going to do def again because we're going to create another function. And we're going to call this mm, multiply. This is my multiply function. And if you could guess, this function is going to multiply something. Whenever I call this function, some type of multiplication is going to happen. I want to do um, print x plus 1. So it's, no, you know what? I'm going to do x. I'm going to do x times 2. All right, so here we go. We have our function we said I want to multiply x times 2 well we have an x here but we we don't ever call it we don't ever we never give it a number so in order to give this a number we need to put this uh, variable inside of our function so I'm gonna say x so now you can see these two here correspond it's gonna use this x here for this number and it's going to take x and it's going to multiply by 2. Now if I call this function multiply and I try to run it but I don't give it a number inside of those parentheses it's going to give me an error and it says you are missing one of the required positional arguments well I never gave it a number to go inside of the function here so all we have to do to make this work is actually put a number inside of our new function and let's see what happens run now we know 2 times 2 is 4 so there it is 4 and if we change the number in here to 3 this is going to be 6 and then 4 would be 8 and then just so on and so forth no matter what number I put in there it's always going to multiply it by 2 Likewise, I could change the number here, and I could say 4, and then if I ran it again, it's always going to multiply by 4. Excellent. I'm going to put that back to 2. So that seems a little bit more useful. What if I want to do a little bit more complicated of a problem? Let's use this for a placeholder. We're going to do x to the power of 2 plus 1. This is our goal. This is what we're trying to do with our function. We want to make a function that will give us x squared plus 1. So let's define a function. This is going to be the, uh, I don't know, let's just call it the uh, test function. I don't care. Test. And likewise, we had an, this one has an x, so I'm going to put an x in here. This is, we're going to pass in a number and it's going to do something. So we want to do... Uh, print, we want it to print something. We want it to do x times x, because that is x squared is just x times x, and then we want to add 1. Alright, now let's test our new function that we've made. So let's do, um, let's call our function test and run it. Let's see. Oh, we got to make sure we put a number in there. Let's put one we know the answer to. So I know what 
1 is. I can do that. 1 times 1 is 1, and then add 1, so it should be 2. So if we run this, the answer is 2. That's correct. All right, let's do this again. I'm going to do it a couple times. We'll give it some different values just to check our work here. 3, 4, 5. All right. So we can, with these aren't numbers aren't too high, we should be able to figure it out. So let's see and, and check if all these are right. So 2, and then 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10. 4 times 4 is 16 plus 1 is 17. So yeah, it looks like our stuff is working just, per, just great. All right. So what if we wanted to have a function? that had more than one variable like maybe let's see let's do a very let's do one like this um, mx plus mm, I'll just do one number uh, five let's do five so we have two variables this time whenever you in, in math if you have two um, letters next to each other that's telling us that we want to multiply them so <clears throat> we need two variables in, in here this time. So let's go ahead and add, how could we add the number, the next number in here, or the next variable? Well, it's pretty simple. We just do m comma. So now our function is receiving two values. It's receiving the m and it's receiving the x. All we have to do now is adjust this part to match our, our uh, test our uh, whatever our formula we're trying to make here so we want to change this first one to m and then plus five now if we ran if we run this when we're whenever we're calling our function we only give it one number let's see what happens it says you got an error and it doesn't have the argument x so it has the argument m because we can see we gave it a number there but we did not give it the second second argument. So let's do let's give it another number. We can do one one, two one, three one, four one, and five one. All right, will this work? Sure does. One times one plus five is six. One times one or two times two. Ooh. No, it's 2 times 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 5 is 7. 3 times 1 plus 5 is 8. And so on and so forth. So cool. We learned how to create a function. We learned how to call that function. And we learned how to pass it some information so it can do some things. Um, that's all we're going to do for today. Have a great day.